think Joker's right here. If this is any other fan, you don't get to hold on to the basketball. I, I think he's absolutely in the right. I think so as well. And it will be very telling to see how the NBA responds to this incident because we're in the middle of the postseason. We're in the middle of a series where game five is going to be very pivotal in this Nuggets and Suns matchup. And it's not just a nobody who was doing this. This is one of the faces of the league. Nikola Jokic, if you take him out of the lineup, if you suspend him, whatever, uh, there's a huge hole. This is a guy that is a two-time MVP and also averaging a 40-point triple-double over the last two games. No player in NBA postseason history has done that. So what he brings to the court, if you take him off of it, it feels very unfair. So you look at a team like the Nuggets, and if they do this, if they suspend Nikola Jokic, Mm -hmm. Nuggets fans are going to be livid and for good reason. So moving forward, do you think we should expect to not see Nikola Jokic on the court for game five? I think it would be monumentally stupid of the NBA to do right? this, which it it would be the NBA, right? Like, don't mm-hmm. they have a vested inf- interest in Kevin Durant and Devin Booker moving forward? Isn't that the sexier matchup? Isn't that something that, that NBA fans want to see? I don't think that's fair. But you know from a ratings perspective, from a promotional perspective, doesn't the NBA want the Suns in the Western Conference Finals? I, I just – Joker makes a great point, which is if this is any other, you don't get to hold on to the basketball. Now, now I will say Nikola Jokic gave Matt Ishbia a little bit of a nudge there, a little bit of an elbow, and then Ishbia flopped back like, oh my God, I've been hit. I was like, come on, dude. He didn't, he didn't really shove you that hard. But I think he's right. Just because you're the owner doesn't mean you get to hold on to the basketball and sit there with it. So if the NBA, and he's right, if this were a fan, the NBA would immediately, immediately protect the player because that's what it's supposed to do. But what are they going to do here? Are they going to be hypocrites and say, oh, you can't act this way towards an owner? Because at the end of the day, if you're sitting there, you're just a fan. Just because you have some sort of status doesn't mean that you get to act differently. I had a question Mm -hmm. because I was thinking this to myself. Which player is more valuable to their team? an NFL quarterback that is an MVP caliber player or a closer in basketball, not just a superstar, but somebody who is fully capable of taking over a game in the final two minutes, because it's not the same thing as just a superstar. It's a guy that kind of has that killer instinct that has the confidence to take those final shots and also the skill to make them. So who do you think is more important? A quarterback in the age where, you know, the supply and demand is, there's not that many good ones mm-hmm. or a closer in basketball that can seal a series almost by himself. Quarterback. No question. It's the hardest really? position on the planet. Yes. It's the hardest position on the planet. I mean, it's not even close. There's a reason why it is so difficult to find a decent, a decent quarterback in the NFL. I mean, think mm-hmm. about it now that it, you, when you talk about the top 10 quarterbacks in the league, once you get past that top 10 or so, it starts to drop down pretty quickly. And I think the primary reason is this. Not only is it the most important position and most difficult position in all of sports, but if you are a closer in basketball, that you can kind of mill around, you can, you can play decent basketball and then come alive. A quarterback, if you don't play well at quarterback, you're not going to have a chance to win by the end of the game anyway. Like, quarterbacks can absolutely torpedo a game. They can torpedo a season because it's not spot duty. Whereas in the NBA, if you're a closer, you can come in late. You could be a sixth man. You could come off the bench and not have hurt your team, but then help them late. But if you're a quarterback, there is so, so much more risk involved where you can abs- you can throw four picks. It won't matter what you do at the end of the game. Game's over. So I think it's quarterback, and and again, Matt just put this in the chat, but there's a reason why guys like Daniel Jones, you think Danny Jones is getting paid $50 million? How? Well, part of it is he had a good season, or $40 million. The, the The other part of it is who else are they going to get? Draft another guy and, and roll the dice again? It's just so difficult to find, so I'm going quarterback. Do you think it's closer? I think I tend to agree with you in the quarterback situation. But I could definitely argue the other side because, number one, basketball players make a lot, too. Like, how much did Mike Conley 
make when he was in Memphis? Like this guy made over $100 million. And just by virtue mm -hmm. of the fact that there is only five guys on the court at a time. And I think in the postseason, you can have a quarterback that kind of has a mediocre game, but the team's still in it. Like look at the Jimmy G effect where they went to Lambeau Field. Jimmy Garoppolo threw like, I think two picks in that game and they still won it. So there are more ways to win in the NFL. It is more of a team sport, but you're absolutely, absolutely right about the demand for quarterbacks right now because it's in an all-time high like it is incredibly difficult to find a good quarterback and I think the crazy thing now is all the quarterbacks are in the AFC so maybe yeah. in the NFC you don't have to have a superstar quarterback uh to make it to the NFC championship but I thought it was an interesting argument so I wanted to float it to you and then somebody tailed on top of that they said okay well who would you take Tom Brady or Michael Jordan you got an answer there well, also, if this is where I would say, if it's you're talking about one. a clutch play, it's a tough, but then I think we're getting into maybe a different argument. Like, if you're talking about a good closer, like, to me, a good closer in the NBA would be like a Robert Ory or someone like that who big ah, shot Robert. That's not what I'm talking but, about. Oh, it, well, if you're talking about a great, an MVP player, well, I would still say quarterback because it's more, it, it's still the more difficult position to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it just, it's just, impossible to find great quarterbacks it's ex exceptionally difficult how many guys come out and have, you know you definitely know the quarterbacks and this is uh, another thing that I think supports this argument is there are a ton of basketball players right and they come out and they don't make it in the pros very good basketball players they just don't live up to their potential but you always remember the quarterbacks that come in whether it's Jamarcus Russell Ryan Leaf Zach Wilson, these guys that come in with these massive expectations, they're at the top of the draft, they sign monster quarterbacks, and then the bottom just falls out. So if we're talking about MVP players, maybe that, but a close, I, I think we're talking about two different things. We're a closer in basketball. I don't necessarily think of the best player in basketball. That, if you're talking about Jordan versus Brady, I feel like maybe that's a different argument. So Chelsea, who's your MVP this Monday? Yeah, sorry, Wyndham Clark. I'm going to go James Harden here because not only is he putting up these video game numbers, he's not even the guy that's supposed to be doing this. He has the MVP of the league on his team, but yet yeah, the Sixers games and their wins have been mostly decided by the performance of James Harden. So I think this is a big performance from him. Clearly the 42 points and also some of these clutch shots that he's made. Uh, the three back in one of the other games. Then he had the jumper with just a, a couple seconds to go in this one. And plus the added touch that he had that touching tribute to the Michigan State shooting survivor. I thought that was really nicely done. So I'm going to go James Harden here. Yeah, I'm going to go James Harden as well, just because, you know, it's kind of crazy too, is that the Sixers have needed every ounce of James Harden to mm -hmm. stay in this series. Remember in the first game, like he, he had, what, 46? And even then, it took a fall away three over Al Horford for the Sixers to win that game. And then yesterday, it took a floater with like, 14 seconds to play to tie this game and then took a game winner in overtime for the Sixers to win this game by one. So James Harden is giving, giving about every ounce that you can give as an NBA player. We're talking about a closer, Chelsea. I mean, he has closed out two games of this series. So if not for him, you also mentioned how maybe Joel Embiid has been a little bit meek or maybe a touch timid. I, I, I think you're right. It is James Harden here because he is the reason why the Sixers are still in this series. Is there anything interesting in this division that you might put a sprinkle on? Yeah, I like the Saints a lot at plus 125. Plus money for New Orleans, a team that finally has their quarterback. They have a great defense, probably the best defense in the entire division. And now they have a quarterback who can finally distribute to the different weapons on that Saints offense. And, and honestly, this is partially about the Saints being better. They certainly should. But also, it's, it's a fade of everyone else. Desmond Ritter is going to be the quarterback for the Falcons. Yeah, I don't think so. I love Bryce Young. Do I think he's going to lead the Panthers to immediate success? No. Again, he's still a rookie. I don't know who the Buccaneers have a quarter. Oh, they have Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. Like, no thanks. Ooh. I love this. Boo. <laughs> Terrible. Good. And also, this is just a weak division. Do you know what I mean? If this were a different division, yeah. the way I'd pick the Saints, but this is probably the weakest division in all of football. So you, if you get plus money on the Saints for 
the best quarterback in the division and a bunch of garbage teams. Yeah, I'll grab plus money with New Orleans. Do you believe in the handicap of just picking the best quarterback in the division? Because I think it probably plays here. But I will say this, Derek Carr is not coming off a great season. So, like, maybe we're giving him too much credit here, but it's just not a good division. Like you said, the bar is so low. Maybe we'll see more from the Panthers. And I think a lot of it hinges on Bryce Young, and that makes me nervous. Like, would you trust a rookie quarterback to win a division? Because we've seen rookie quarterbacks that are uber talented. Like, look at Trevor Lawrence. And how highly regarded he was coming out of the draft. Now, Mm -hmm. huge asterisk, he also had Urban Meyer. And maybe it would have been different yet Mm -hmm. if he had a competent head coach. But I think it takes, you know, at least a season to adjust to the speed of the NFL. 